What's up everybody, this is Cyrus, supernatural author, researcher, and tonight I want to talk about the phenomenon of vortex sites and places that are just phenomenally haunted. And one of the most famous is a place in Romania called, and I'm going to mangle this pronunciation, Hoya Baciu. And it's uh, sometimes referred to as the Bermuda Triangle of Europe. So there's all types of paranormal phenomena that happens in this forest. So you have reports of orange orbs that, that float through the air. There's a lot of weird missing persons incidences. We have uh, UFOs. We have laughing, like ghosts laughing. We have extraterrestrial gray aliens. Basically, it's like um, everything. It's like basically you put all the different paranormal topics into a blender. You just hit puree, and then that's what this place is. And, you know, I eat this stuff up. I'm super curious about this place. I would love to check out this forest. And next time I'm in Europe, I may very well take a trip into Hoya Bachiu Forest. And certainly there's been a couple of ghost hunting shows that have gone out there in the past. And we don't know how, how legitimate those shows are. But I, I do want to speak from, like, a metaphysical research perspective, if this kind of thing is possible. And... And just what I think about it. So we know that there seems to be sites on the planet that have an interdimensional connection. And so this is why every paranormal thing under the sun happens in those areas. You might see Bigfoot, you might see UFOs, you might see ghosts, there might be um, orbs of light, there might be angels and demons and whatever else you can think of. All this weird stuff happening. Well, the thing is, is that in other dimensions, it's it's a jungle. So all these crazy things may very well exist, but it exists on a spectrum that's invisible to us. And it's why you it's why you can't always pin these things down into this reality. We can't always get the scientific proof that some people demand because when things exist in other dimensions, it's incompatible in this dimension. So let's take, a, for example, like an extraterrestrial encounter. We don't really know what extraterrestrials are. They may just be entities that live in these other dimensions. Uh, this was certainly what Stephen Hawking proposed when he was talking about the existence of shadow people and that there could be other entities living in other dimensions interacting with us. And they would look, look at us, look to, they would um, look to us as something bizarre and otherworldly, like, like a shadow person, because their dimension is inconsistent with our own. So this isn't like just a bunch of pseudoscience. This is actual stuff that very, very smart people have, have proposed. So all these types of entities could potentially exist in these other dimensions. Now, for whatever reason, there seems to be parts of the Earth where the veil is thin where there is a where there is a bleed through between this world and others and entities and things that live on that side may start you know perhaps out of curiosity coming into this world and that's when you begin having these crazy contact experiences and as an out of body experiencer as somebody who does astral projection i i i feel i believe i've been on that side of the veil and it's interesting because sometimes it can be extremely mundane. You can be in realms and places that seem just like our world, but then you can also have crazy experiences with all kinds of crazy entities and creatures and goblins and and you know things that could potentially go bump in the night, as well as uh, angels and fairies and all kinds of things like that. Like it's like all this stuff is manifesting itself in these less physical, less dense realms, dimensions that, that, that seem to exist, kind of overlaid on top of this one. And so it's pretty crazy to think all that stuff leaking out of a particular location and, and, and uh, manifesting into this particular world, where it's not natural for those things to just be walking around willy-nilly. So in a place like this, you could expect virtually anything to happen. And I do think it could be dangerous because the entities that exist out there, I mean, it's just there's just, just infinite variations of things that can exist. And who's to say that all of it is benevolent? 
I think, a common personality trait. And you can, you can see this by looking back to old folklore about fairies, I mean, Gaelic folklore, is that so many entities have a mischievous property about themselves, that they delight in playing jokes, and those jokes could sometimes even involve frightening somebody or even killing somebody. To them, it's not a big deal. To them, they see, you know, death is kind of a joke. It's just like, you know, playing a video game and then you you uh, kill somebody in this life and then they're in that, then, you know, they cross over and then they're in that, that side and they don't see a big deal about it. So, you know, that could explain why there's been missing persons accounts in this, in this place and in other types of, quote, Bermuda Triangle locations. It could also be that these are locations where people walk through vortexes and they end up somewhere else just like they just like entities can come through the vortex and come to our side maybe you can walk into a vortex and appear on that side and then you can never get home again again sounds like some of those old fairy stories we hear about people taking a walk in the woods and ending up in the, the world of fairies and never finding their way back uh we hear about this in those old uh what were they like um um mushroom circles right that if you walk into the mushroom circle you'll be stuck there forever because the fairies will trap you or you'll end up in the fairy world you cannot escape and of course all this stuff is superstition but there could be some grains of truth behind it so if you've ever been to this forest if you've ever had an experience like this i want to hear about it. please leave a comment and uh it's something i'd love to investigate more thoroughly in the future so that's it for this video uh if you like what I have to say, you can hit subscribe and keep this itty bitty channel going. I have a much bigger like community surrounding like my books and my Facebook group than this just this little channel on YouTube. You can check that out on Facebook by going to Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics. I have a couple of books out, and you can visit Amazon.com or AfterlifeTopics.com to check those out. I run classes twice a week about life after death and metaphysical concepts. You can check that out also in the description of the video by clicking on show more. And that's it. Thanks for your support. And I'll catch you on the next video.